Hi everybody, welcome back to the Crime Lab. So today's video is actually going to be about an unsolved, a bunch of unsolved murders. Um, so there's a serial killer that's based out of LA, or was based out of LA, that is known as the Skid Row Stabber. Uh, so it is an unsolved serial killer. They don't know who he is. There's been a ton of investigations about, you know, all of the killings and everything, but they still haven't pinpointed who it is. Um, so there's 11 known murders associated to this person that were committed in, in an area of Los Angeles called Skid Row. It's an area notorious for having a large number of homeless people, um, who unfortunately, and a lot of other, you know, victimized people in the area. Um, which is how they, how this person got the name the Skid Row Stabber. Uh, he, his signature weapon was of course a knife. I'm gonna call, use him, um, or they, you know, but we don't know if it was a man, a man or not. Um, so the suspect that was longly suspected of actually being the Skid Row Stabber was Bobby Joe Maxwell, who was arrested, charged, and sentenced um, way back, but his trial and conviction was overturned back in 2010. So um, he ultimately was not the Skid Row Stabber. It is still an unknown person. Uh, so they began in October 23rd, 1978. Um, so I'm going to, and the killer chose homeless victims um, and the corpses were dumped in alleyways uh, of various streets that were located relatively near each other. Again, all kind of based around Skid Row in LA. So I'm gonna do a quick, quick um, rundown of the victims, of what we know of the victims. So 50 year old Jesse Martinez, uh, on October 29th, and I'm gonna go through a few dates, the known dates of where, when they were murdered. So on October 29th, 32-year-old Jose Cortez. October 30th, 46-year-old Bruce Emmett Drake. November 4th, 65-year-old J.P. Henderson. Uh, November 9th, 39-year-old David Martin Jones. He was actually killed near City Hall in downtown. So that was kind of one of the people that was like out in the middle of, away from Skid Row that was killed. November 11th, 57-year-old Francis Perez Rodriguez. November 12th, 36-year-old Frank Reed and 49-year-old Augustine E. Luna. November 17th, 34-year-old Mildred Fletcher. November 20th, 45-year-old Frank Garcia. His body was found uh, November 23rd near City Hall. Um, and one little kind of side comment with uh, Frank Garcia, uh, there was, it was shocked that he was actually found there because there was a large amount of people that were present. So it's really unknown how he was able to be murdered um, and the killer escape with in such a prestigious area of LA and having so many people commonly around there. Um, so there was no witnesses but there was an imprint of a man's hand that was found next to Garcia's body that could have been the killer's. Um, they can't say for certain that it was the killer's, but there's suspicion that it was. And then the last known victim of the Skid Row Stabber was on January 21st, 1979, 26-year-old Luis Alvarez. That is the last known victim associated with this killer. Um, so the subsequent investigation, of course, this was happening kind of throughout the time as far, as far as I could tell. You know, as soon as bodies started showing up, police were investigating. So witnesses were found to David Jones's murder. So the November 9th murder. Uh, and he was, he was the first person killed near City Hall that was associated with this particular murder. Um... Three of Jones's friends claimed that someone had talked with them for several minutes before separating from the group, separating um, David from the group and killing him. Uh, 
And according to witnesses, it was a 30 year old black man who spoke with a Puerto Rican accent and said his name was Luther. That's about what they could give. Um, so then three months later, uh, there was an inscription founded a, in a bus terminal toilet. Um, my name is Luther. I kill winos. I put them out of their misery. So those are some of the main things that were found uh, during the kind of initial investigation. Um, and with the witnesses that were, you know, present, considering that there weren't a ton of witnesses. Um, and I think this is similar to like Jack the Ripper sort of murders. Like they're murdering people in a poorer part of the community, um, people that are commonly victimized, very few witnesses to anything. Um, just, oh yeah, we, we saw this person talking or they were talking to us and then walked away with this guy and then he ended up dead sort of thing. Um, so the suspect, like I said, the main suspect was Bobby Joe Maxwell. Um, there were several people over the course of the investigation that were suspected. Bobby Joe was the one that was suspected and convicted. Um, so fingerprints from the palm print that was found next to Garcia uh, were revealed to be Bobby, Bobby Joe Maxwell, which is the big evidence that they were able to associate with him. Um, and he had been released from prison in Tennessee and then had moved to LA in 1977. So the year before the murders started. Um, and he spent a lot of time on Skid Row or in kind of that general area of LA. Um, so he, there was a lot kind of going up against him. Um, and then in, Dece in December of 1978, uh, he demonstrated deviant behavior against sleeping with homeless people and reject was arrested on charges of disturbing the peace. Um, during the arrest, they found police found a knife on him. And so that was taken into evidence. Um, and he spent several, several weeks in County jail. Um, you know, of course on charges of disturbing the peace and then it was released three days according to detectives, three days prior to the final murder in January of 1979. Um, so he was arrested again, this time based on charges of him being a murderer, on charges of murder, um, because during the time that he was in prison for the um, disturbing the peace, no murders happened. So kind of suspicious stuff, but mostly coincidental. Um, and then after the second arrest, police were able to get a warrant to search his apartment, Maxwell's apartment. Um, and a lot of his clothes and some letters were seized as evidence. <clears throat> and from that, from that information, they were able to deduce that he was a Satanist, which is not, I'm not saying anything against people that are Satanists. Do what you want with your religion. You know, if you choose to be a Satanist, cool. Um, I'm just saying they determined that he was a Satanist and then were using that to link him partially to the murders. Um, and then for a bunch of different reasons, um, now I found conflicting information about what reasons they were, but I'll just say due to various reasons, his court, wait, court date was delayed for five years. So although he was arrested in 1979, his trial didn't actually happen until about 1984. Um, so prosecution's key witness, uh, a person named Sidney Storch was a felon with extensive criminal history was Maxwell's cellmate for three weeks. Therefore, and uh, Storch claimed that Maxwell claimed multiple times to killing homeless people and describing them in detail. So this is what Storch is claiming that Maxwell said. Um, between the testimonies, the witnesses, um, any evidence that was found during the investigation, um, it was determined that the knife, 
the knife found on Maxwell when he was arrested, as well was the murder weapon. Um, so he was found guilty to two murders and sentenced to life in prison without parole. And this was def despite the fact that there was no physical evidence found at any murders aside from the handprint. Um, despite no other evidence, he was being convicted. And, let, and as I said, the handprint that was found at the one murder could police knew that that could have come from anywhere that could have come at any time it just so happened that they found it near the body when the body was found so they obviously associated that with maxwell did it um so then after he was convicted um, so like I said, he was convicted of two murders and sentenced to life without parole. Um, over m the next m several decades, his guilt was actually debated. There was so much debate going on. Um, and he was pleading not guilty, regularly lodging appeals over the next 30 years. Um, in 2010, they were actually able to prove witnesses to Jones's murder, the three friends. Um couldn't identify him they they like put him in a lineup they did not point at maxwell they couldn't identify who he was um and had given false testimonies in court under the pressure of investigators and prosecution so they were essentially told you need to lie under oath um to get this guy convicted um and it was proven that Sidney Storch, the guy who was Maxwell's cellmate for three weeks, um, was a former police officer and informant for many years, um, had begun actually ab abusing his position and was had become notorious for giving false information. So six trials that Storch had actually been involved in were considered invalid because he was giving such bad information. So then in 2010... Um, the trial, the original trial was overturned and he was appointed a new trial. At the end of 2017, Maxwell suffered a severe heart attack and that caused him to go into a coma, unfortunately. Um, so he was in the hospital and LAPD dropped all the charges against him after in 2018 was found not guilty and can conviction his conviction and previous sentence were overturned um and ruled a miscarriage of justice maxwell died in april 2019 he had never come out of the coma that he had slipped into after his heart attack and never knew that he was found not guilty he never knew that his conviction was overturned um so as of right now nobody knows who the skid row stabber was um because the only person that has ever been convicted was of course wrongfully convicted and is now dead, um, unfortunately. So that is one unknown criminal case, like unsolved criminal case that I wanted to do because I found it very interesting. You know, it's something that you don't, don't hear a lot because people love trying to solve this stuff, you know? Um, but if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, emotional outbursts, got suggestions for future videos, let me know and throw it down in the comments. Have a great day.